Okay, let's go. We got a video for a set called the uh, Sogno. It is from Shenzhen Audio. It looks like it's four hundred dollars. It's two DD six BA. Let me go ahead and put some background music on here so I can enjoy myself while I do this and shut that down. Looks like a two DD six BA. A quick skim is telling me it's four hundred dollars. I'm not seeing any details about what the drivers are. If we take a look to my left, we can see the frequency response graph for some reference. You may not have heard the storm before, but if you have in a demo or anything else, this is how they are different in general tonality, lining them up at 500 hertz. This is a good example of what I actually hear in the replay. The bass is, it's okay. Um, and the upper mids and treble are clearly taking the focus away, which is, I, I guess it depends on your library, whether or not something you prefer. I don't think the graphs really tell us anything beyond general tonality. And for that reason, we'll go ahead and move on from that. But that's what that looks like. And that is uh, VSG Tech Power Ups graph. Thank you. He didn't give me permission, but I used it anyway. This is my... These are my references. This means that I listen to these tracks every single time because I have a... I don't know if a lot of people do that or not. I think it's kind of autism and OCD combined. But using those tracks, let's go ahead and talk about how this set sounds. I think that in the low end, Big Boy Kill Jill, the, the triple drop, the lowest being at 38 hertz, sounds um, just enough. It sounds okay. This wouldn't be a set that I would recommend for people that have a lot of... Uh, low frequency EDM, trip hop, hip hop, R&B, um, a good portion of my library. It, it's not really set for that. Um, as we move into a four and five string bass guitar, the pulls, the plucks, the releases, the ringing on the strings. This is where I look at the graph and I say the ringing, blah, blah, blah. Actually, the bass guitar doesn't sound... It sounds okay. It sounds like a bass guitar. It, it sounds clean. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it just doesn't have the power that I'm expecting in some tracks that I listen to, like Sultans of Swing, um, Please Do No Code by the Violent Femmes. I don't think that those are uh, quite doing it in the way that I would want to do it. As we get to the kick drum by John Bonham, the iconic track from the fourth album, again, it sounds like a kick drum, but it doesn't quite have the force. This is a combination of the, the amount of energy put into the low end and a balance of how much your focus is being stolen by what's happening in the upper mids and treble because there's a lot going on actually in that track. Um, so the low end is not quite my thing. As we get into the mids, which is what I use vocals for, um, Chris Cornell, Lane Staley, uh, a woman named Nina doing Heart of Glass, which is a cover of a Blondie track. Um, in all three instances cited here and in all vocal listening, the vocals are definitely forward, as, again, the graph would indicate might be the case. It actually is. And again, this is a combination. Steel focus is actually a really big thing in this hobby. It, it happens in car audio, too. And my analogy is you have a great system. It's all crossed over, DSP, unit, the whole thing. And then you turn your bass up just over the top. It, it kills everything else that is there you just can't pick it up because your ears are being overwhelmed by something else um which would be the sub bass in that scenario when you put a lot of energy in the upper mids and in that region e even more so there than beyond 10k you're getting a lot of energy from symbols and other things and it's really when they present themselves it kind of steals your focus away from everything else um, and vocal harmonics can become, depending on who the singer is, um, can be quite intense. So the mids are probably going to be for people that like their vocals forward. As we get into what is essentially harmonics overtones, which is really the same thing, the, the residual sound that is created from the fundamental moment of the finger plucking on the bass guitar string or the cymbal being struck by the stick which again happens right in the right in the middle of the mids but most of the energy that you're really picking up typically is in the ear gain region from where it starts if it starts at around 1k to that plateau at around four to five to six that's more boosted that instrument is going to sound m more emphasized and it's going to linger longer by milliseconds potentially just because of its volume and energy 
which is going to be a distraction. It's going to sound slightly unnatural, um, and it's going to pull you away from other parts of the mix because the symbol is certainly not the only thing you're listening to. Um, who is this set for? I'm taking this from another channel because it's a good idea. I think that this is probably for people that, one, and don't take this wrong, that have hearing loss. There's some weird taboo in this hobby, even though there's a lot of people that are older, um, about talking about hearing loss. Th this might be for people that have a struggle or definitely don't like something like, um, like the Explorer or sets with subtle subdued upper mids where they just feel like that really kills everything you might actually enjoy the energetic part that is boosted um this would also be for people that i'm speculating now but female vocals and i think you'd probably refer to other reviewers that have more female vocals in their library than myself maybe that's it maybe it pops out a little bit and you're certainly not getting the mid bass intrusion that would maybe eat up on female vocal quality so it could be for them who is this not for this is for people that want the the note weight is the way to sum it all up but that would be mm, things sounding not brittle and thin the, the opposite of that you could describe as having a good note weight which could also be termed as maybe sounding kind of musical. The low end, the rhythm section has the energy. The backbone of the replay and the production is usually instruments in the rhythm section uh, in multiple genres. Even in K-pop and J-pop, they do samples. Um, so if if that's important to you, this wouldn't be a set for you. Um, if you worried about the gunk falling into the nozzle, which I don't really think is a big deal, that might be something that you should take pause in. And also, at $400, there's lots of competition here. I just did the Mangard T Pro. Um, I can't remember what the price of that is, but that's a, that's a really good set that I would consider over this set, personally. Um, so this is aimed at an audience that's clearly not me. Like the Hexa wasn't my thing, but I could see who would like it. I wouldn't be surprised if someone like uh, Super Reviews maybe likes this because it's definitely not getting in the way in the low end. And I don't know that he's sensitive to a little bit of spice in that region. Um, and he's got his own library. And so there's a whole wing of reviewers that might look at this and say, that looks good, and then listen to it. And in fact, they actually like the replay. So it, this comes down to library. Not really my thing. I appreciate Shenzhen sending this out. I think that the Volare was a little bit closer to my thing. Let me see if I can get this. This is not my IO Polare. Man, it's not that different. Yeah, okay. Um, beautiful shells, hopefully, and I guess my message to Shenzhen, who is probably very influential towards this company um instead of doing what moondrop did which was like a lot of variations of that same target maybe this company can instead of four or five iterations of this now that you've done two that are very very similar on the graph anyway so that means that they're presenting music in a very similar way perhaps a uh sub bass dominant set or something like um like my own collab let me go down here i'm not hyping this because it's a totally different price level but let me put this in red so you can see it something with uh more bass energy but around 200 hertz getting in there so you're not really destroying it especially if it's a what crossed over and a tribrid and then you've got a kind of a laid down more like a storm in the upper mids maybe some Maybe some creativity in the price and in the tuning will draw more people towards this company because there's been two sets released and they're very similar except one's more affordable than the other in general presentation. So thank you for sending the set. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm thinking right now because of the price, I said below five is going to go to people that comment under video. So I think I'll, I might do that. 
Um, but I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe for my Patreons. Um, and that's it. I'll let you guys go. I rambled a little bit on this one. It is a stunningly beautiful set. It does look really nice. And it's very well presented. So there's, there's that. Um, and I'm out.